Hello and welcome to the Adventure Film Podcast number 8 and this one is for Raiders of the Lost Ark. A uh, quick introduction, we're discussing 10 adventure films. So far we've done King Kong, The Man Who Would Be King, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, Hidden Fortress, Lawrence of Arabia, Time Bandits, and the last one we did was Lost Horizon. They're all kind of archetypal classic adventure films when we're, we're sort of discussing them to find out what makes a great adventure film, why these are particularly good adventure films, and also just discussing the films in general. So my name is Garen Ewing and I'm a comic creator. I've got a, an adventure comic called The Rainbow Orchid and I'm discussing these films with my brother Murray Ewing. Hello, I'm Murray. Um, I write short stories, mostly fantasy, science fiction, horror, that sort of thing. Um, so this one is Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is 1981 directed by Steven Spielberg. Yep. Is the brainchild of George Lucas and Steven Spielberg and Lawrence Kasdan and Philip Kaufman are the main creative names behind it. I think it was George Lucas's idea. Yeah. And it's difficult to say what an influence <laughs> Raiders was. I mean, this is our second film from 1981. The other yeah. one was Time Bandits. And we mentioned this in Time Bandits. I, I was 12. You were... Ten. Ten. And I think we discussed this. That that's kind of... I always think children should be 12 for about four years <laughs> rather than just one year because so much... I don't know. When I look back, and probably not exactly 12, but maybe 10 to 12, 13... Those those years, you're getting into so much stuff and so much, so so many things kind of stay with you. Mm. Unless, of course, you're having a terrible life at age twelve, <laughs> you probably don't want to remember it. But for for me, the comics, yeah, some of the television, but the films, comics, and books that I was reading yeah. in that, it's, it's probably I remember it all as twelve. It's probably from sort of eight to fifteen or something. <laughs> but really informed a lot of what I like now. Yeah, I don't know if you're. I don't know if that's a scientific thing that you're certain things forming well there are certain authors and so on who people say oh you've got to read them when you're you know at the right age you know yeah. like people say hp lovecraft and tolkien I, mean, I don't quite agree with that what for that so, age yeah people say oh yeah you know if you don't read it at that age you probably never quite get it later on you yeah. know but i don't know well i'm sure it's different for everyone but certainly you're very open and sort of sponge-like <laughs> yeah <laughs> um at that at that time yeah um, for things to come in yeah. and settle, yeah. as it were, and they, as you get older, there's no doubt it gets more. You, you you're more difficult to impress, perhaps, or to be influenced. Mm. I mean, there's stuff I like now that I've really you know new stuff that I've discovered and really got into, so that's fine. But um, there's this sort of base layer of stuff, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm just being a bit rose tinted about it all. But anyway, Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's no doubt it's um, it's an amazing, influential film. And and certainly has. I mean, Red, Red the Rainbow Orchid. The, the other people say Tintin, of course, uh, which it is influenced by. And the other thing people say is Raiders is Indiana Jones. Yeah. Which, which I didn't really think of when I. It wasn't as conscious as Tintin, but that's what I'm. I think it's subconsciously that's what I'm made up of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark and yes. uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> I, uh, I sort of feel. I mean, obviously, every generation will have their own version of this, but I, think, well, yeah. I sort of feel privileged to have grown up at the right time to see these films. Yeah. And I thought at the time, well, this is how films will always be. And after a while, you think, hang on, not every film is as good as Raiders of the Lost Ark <laughs> and Star Wars and so on. I mean, are we? Are there films like that now? Yeah. Like maybe Harry Potter, although that yes. might be an exceptional case. Yeah. Um, but I think the point is they are the exceptions. Oh, that's true, mm. yeah. But they probably do come across, you know, every generation. Well, I'm, I mean, maybe there's a film that we don't get. I mean, I do enjoy the Harry Potter films. Yeah. So may, maybe, are there other films that we don't get? Like, um, well, I can only think of ones like Raiders, and, and they're all pale imitations, really. I think. Well, like the second Star Wars series, maybe. You know, does that mean as much to someone as the first? That that's an saw? excellent <laughs> example. I mean, I quite enjoyed them, mm. um, generally. Uh, not as good as the first three, but then that's what we're talking about, isn't it? That's the bias. <laughs> But to kids who are 8 to 12 and who saw The Phantom Menace, yeah. is that their Star Wars? Yeah. I mean, do they see Star Wars and see, yeah, it's not as good as The Phantom Menace? Yeah. After I go and ask a <laughs> uh, 12, an 8-year-old, well, yes. I suppose now they'd be a... Oh, I don't even think about it, probably in their 20s. <laughs> <laughs> and of course... The thing about Raiders of the Lost Ark is it is inspired by the sort of films that Steven Spielberg and George Lucas saw at that age. Yes, yes. Well, not the films, but the serials, the classic yes, serials. Yes, 
Or certainly, yeah, the 30s and 40s B-movie serials. Yeah. I mean, the only ones I got into, they showed on a Saturday morning, were, the, were Flash Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Which is science fiction. Although yeah. that informed Star Wars, I think, to yeah. some degree. That it was also part of that. In fact, George Lucas tried to get the uh, rights to Flash Gordon. Oh. And when he failed, he wrote his own, which was Star oh, Wars. Oh, I see. Yeah. OK, so... so the there's link. two major films, really, that have come from that tradition yeah. of the... Yeah. 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 Although I remember... I mean, I used to look forward to Flash Gordon, even yeah. though it was, I don't know, 30, 40 years after it's... Yeah. And it was obviously dated. It was black yeah. and white. You could see the strings. Yet that didn't matter to me. Mm. So, I mean, that was someone else's childhood thing. Yet, as however old I was, I don't know when they showed um, Flash Gordon, yeah. how old I was, but the old serials, I... I used to really look forward to them, yeah. even though they were old. Yeah. So, so that that can't really have that much of a bearing. And it's interesting actually because you you've spoken about these films where you've liked the Art Deco type design in them. Yes, <laughs> of course, Flash Gordon had that same uh, era era of design. Yeah, that's you true. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had that look. Yes, I mean, I wonder what kids today. <laughs> kids <Yeah>. today <laughs> what would they make of Raiders? Would would yeah. they have the same? Would a twelve year old be blown away? I'm mean, expecting mm. they would. I guess it wouldn't be if they've seen CGI stuff. There, there may be a slight lack. I don't know. I guess if someone in their twenties saw *Raiders of the Lost Ark* now, yeah. they'd be a lot more analytical about it. Yeah. Perhaps saying, "Oh, well, you know, that <laughs> looks a bit rubbish." But but then there's been so much sub *Raiders* stuff since then that, mm. or, I mean, f- films have been influenced by *Raiders*. They yeah. still are, I think. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I I, th- I know I've said before that I think this is the podcast that I've, I've already had emails about <laughs> which um, we, we don't get a lot of feedback on the, on the website although um, we do get looking at the numbers we seem to get we've got a very nice listenership but I have had not feedback but feed forward <laughs> on Raiders <laughs> just because people are so interested in it because yeah. it's such a, a seminal film I mean that's the other thing there'll be people listening to this who know so much more about the yeah. film than, than we do or certainly than I do when Razors came out, mm. I was a total fanboy. I bought the, you know, the making of books, the mm. art of the in, of Indiana Jones, whatever was out there. Yeah, um, I got and and yeah. you know drew things based on it and all that. So I probably don't realise the influence. Yeah, yes, it has. It's one of the things that's always been there. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it may have even. Whereas Star Wars put me onto science fiction, and I, I I started reading 2000 AD, and I read Isaac Asimov and mm. uh, Harry Harrison and Arthur C. Clarke. Yeah. I wonder if Raiders, I you know, I can't remember. Mm. But I wonder if Raiders kind of knocked science fiction off the pedestal and replaced yeah. it with adventure, which has really been my main thing, possibly mm. since then. I mean, I didn't. I've always loved science fiction as well. I'm not saying that replaced it totally by yeah. any means, but I think Raiders is probably the thing. Although I was into Tintin. Yeah. Uh, way before either Star Wars or well, probably about the same time Star Wars, but a little bit before. Which is that is that classic adventure yes. that Raiders I think taps into a bit. Wouldn't be surprised, of course, Spielberg making Tintin. <laughs> yeah, he is. I mean, it's not it's not sort of mentioned as a, and it's more comes from George Lucas' yeah. original idea. But um, certainly, it put me on the path to this sort of kind of classic adventure more. Yeah. I think. But I, I think there is an awful lot that could be said about the making of it and the history of it. But um, we probably won't say everything. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I don't... N- now it's faded a lot. And I, yeah. I, I kind of... In a way, when I had to watch the film for this, which I, I just did yesterday, I was a bit bored. thinking, oh, not really... It's a chore. <laughs> and I don't mean... I mean, once I put the film on, yeah. I was on that adventure again. Oh, right, but I've yeah. seen it so many times mm. that I thought, you know, do I even have to watch it? In fact, I think... I can't remember if it was <clears throat> BBC Four or BBC Three recently showed the Raiders films the Indiana Jones films and I I saw I think I saw more of the second one Temple of Doom yeah Um, but still I felt I mean I've seen Raiders certainly within the last year so I I was a bit of a better fit this in Um, (laughs) but of course I really enjoyed it yeah again uh, who knows how many times I've seen it did you watching it again did you enjoy it Yes, definitely. I mean, the funny thing is, the one I remember seeing the most is uh, The Temple of Doom. Yeah. And partly because that was the anticipation of seeing it. Yes. Because obviously I'd seen Raiders and then knew what it was about. And then when the next film was announced, I thought, oh, great. But for a long time, Temple of Doom was my favourite. Yeah. And I think because of that, because it was at my age when I was a bit more... Maybe. In the slot. I mean, also, I think Raiders was the first one. Um, they didn't know it was going to be a massive mm. hit. Um 
Temple of Doom, they'd already knew that Raiders had been a big hit, and there was more merchandise. I'm sure I remember yeah. I had, there were more books available to buy yeah. about <laughs> it, um, and I remember having those. So I kind of remember that more. Yeah. Although, of course, it was more recent in history as well. Yeah, Dr. Jones, we've heard a great deal about you. Have you? Uh, professor of archaeology, expert on the occult, and uh, how does one say it? Obtainer of rare antiquities. One way of saying it. Why don't you sit down? You'll be more comfortable. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're a man of many talents. So, Harrison Ford? Yes. <laughs> Tom Selleck? <laughs> yes, yes. Let's talk about the... I always like the alternate <laughs> cast. The alternate cast could have been... Tom Selleck as Indiana Jones, which I can't imagine. No. Oh. <laughs> I mean, obviously, if it had happened, then you wouldn't, then you'd have no problem. But uh, yeah, I think he was a bit of an unknown at the time. But now we've seen him in so many other roles, he's got a character. Yeah. And you can't, you can't fit that into the Indiana-shaped hole, <laughs> <laughs> which is a Harrison Ford shape. Yes. Um, the female lead is Marion Ravenswood, and that that's Karen Allen. But yeah. the possible was Sean Young. Oh, right. Uh, from Blade Runner. Yeah, and uh, Dune. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. I've only seen Dune once, so yeah. I, it's not uppermost in my mind. But yes, Sean Young, very attractive, but I didn't think she was a great actress in mm. Blade Runner. I mean, she was, maybe that helped. Well, it was a very different <laughs> part. I think a lot of yeah. it was her being very quiet. You know, it was a very, well, she's, she come, I've always felt she came across as a little bit stilted and inexperienced, mm-hmm. but then maybe the role demands it. Yes. <laughs> um, the third main character is Belloc. Paul Freeman. I, I don't know any alternatives for him. The funniest. John <laughs> Rhys Davis plays Salah, yeah. the best digger in Cairo. Yeah. And <laughs> it was Danny DeVito. Yes. I didn't know that till I read that this morning. <laughs> Unbelievable. Can you imagine? <laughs> Maybe he'd have been brilliant. I can imagine him in it. Wasn't he in uh, Romancing the Stone? Yes. Or I something think so, like that. Yeah. Or I don't know. Which I presume was a one of those movies that maybe greenlit in the, yeah. in the I don't know what year it was but uh, I can't actually remember the plot but I'm sure that the, the poster has got isn't, isn't him it, and her swinging on a rope you isn't, know isn't, I don't know if it's the bloke or the woman it's an adventure writer but turns out yes. not to be quite uh, and it's, oh my, I've got this totally wrong I think I've only seen it once but does the woman expect him to be like his character and he's totally not or I something think, yeah Who, who's the bloke is it Michael Douglas yeah Michael Douglas and Where Kathleen Turner yes yes, yes. Kathleen Turner yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other one Tot the SS or Gestapo oh, officer yes, yeah. was could have been Klaus Kinski yes god <laughs> Ronald Lacey is the actor who plays Tot in the actual film and yeah. he's he's slightly funny he's quite yeah. there's a bit of comedy with Klaus Kinski I think <laughs> it was just throwing it into such dark yeah <laughs> or maybe, maybe we're, we're typecasting we're, we're putting their known character onto yeah. it maybe he could have been very funny but suddenly Razor Lost Ark takes a turn into the <laughs> yeah. real you know real dark place <laughs> But he didn't like the script. No. In fact, he used a very rude word about the script. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I guess we can be very glad that Ronald Lacey got the part because he's, mm. he's very memorable. Yeah. With his chuckling, at every, the, the slight mention of um, torture sends him into <laughs> giggles. <laughs> and John Rhys Davis got the part because of um, Shogun. <laughs> Oh right! Steven Spielberg saw him in Shogun. Oh, I love Shogun. And, which is a similar sort of character, you know. He's he's that translator character where he's someone who's already uh, in place and yeah, guides yeah, yeah, the. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's um he's, he's Port- already in Japan, isn't he? Yeah, when... he's Portuguese, I think. Right. But he's friendly towards uh, Richard Chamberlain's yeah. character. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas most of the Portuguese aren't, you know. Inglesi. Yeah. Suddenly <laughs> <laughs> came back to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, probably the last main character to talk about is Denham Elliott plays. Dr. Yeah. Marcus Brody. Yeah. Love um, Dylan Elliott. Yeah, brilliant. He's yeah. one of those people who pops up in genre films as much as serious films and yes. does them... A respected yeah, actor. Yeah, but he does them well. Yes. It's just like Peter Cushing. You know, you know, he, they always raise He'd always a bad put himself film. <laughs> into it, no matter what yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, one of the things about when they were trying to decide on the character of Indiana Jones, apparently Steven Spielberg had this idea of making him an alcoholic... Uh, and he got that idea from the Humphrey Bogart character in Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Yeah, Dobbs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and in fact, the visualisation of the costume was yes. from Dobbs as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few little links. I mean, that was that was probably the main one with other films. The only other one, or the other main one, was um, they used some footage of an aeroplane from Lost Horizon. 
Oh, really? But from the 1973 version, oh. of course it had to be in colour. It's I think it's when the aeroplane is flying to Nepal and yeah. they've got the map with the red dotted line yeah. and there's a, an overlay of the aircraft flying over mountains or whatever. Mm. That's from the 1973 Lost Horizon. Oh. <laughs> that thing, that device of having the map and the red dotted line just seems so brilliant now. I mean, yeah. when I saw it, I just would have accepted it. Yeah. But you think about it now, it's not the sort of thing people would have done in films. No, I don't know the history of that. If if yeah. it had been, I'm sure it must have been. Yeah. Um, but, but they know. might have got it from the serials. But it is such a brilliant yeah. touch. You know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's certainly a nice shortcut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it's set in 1936, yes. which is before the Second World War. Yeah. But Germany is on the rise. I mean, Hitler's a, a definite threatening presence in the, in the 30s yeah. late 30s and, and that's the backdrop do we even well, well we'll we'll mention the plot everyone knows it i'm <laughs> sure it's um i the Raiders of the lost ark when i first heard it i'm sure i meant thought mm, Noah's ark but of course it's the ark of the covenant <laughs> yes which is this was they they call it a radio transmitter to god yes um but it's 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 the container for the broken pieces of the 10 commandments yes and it's supposed to have immense power. Yeah. Any any army with it at its head is unbeatable, mm-hmm. which is perhaps the reason Hitler yes. is after it. I mean, because Hitler was supposed to be gen- genuinely interested in occult things. I mean, I've ne- there's lots of mm. books about this. I've never read any of them, but yeah. but I'm aware. I don't so I don't know how true it is, or if it's if it's on the sort of Eric von Zandken uh, <laughs> stuff or yeah. not. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. Yes. But I, th- I think there's some truth to the fact that he had, or, or maybe he didn't. It may have been Goebbels or Himmler had yeah. their interest, and who knows? Actually, it's interesting how many of the films that we've covered have taken place either side of a war. I mean, it's not that's, that's all not, of them. That's, that's not hard in the 20th century. Yeah, that's what you're right. But I mean, you're like the man who would be king was after a war. Hidden Fortress was right after a war. Lawrence of Arabia was during a war. Yeah. Uh, Lost Horizon takes place just after a, a revolt. It's almost like it's got it helps. Uh, Lost to have Horizon. That. Um, I mean, it was made in 1937, and, yes. and that's that's the backdrop of that. Is I mean, they knew there was going to be there was trouble brewing, yeah, um, mm. in in Europe. And I think when he talks about Conway, he talks about armies and peace, and, and it's got a strong the, the idea of Shangri La. Um, it's a refuge from it's world got real troubles, it's got real yeah. resonance, hasn't it? Because of political events. So yeah. now here's a film, Raiders of the Lost Ark, looking back to that time. So the Nazis are going around collecting, we presume, occult items, yes. and, and the, the Ark being a powerful item is one they're particularly interested in. And these government men come to Indiana Jones at his college, the, his university that he teaches at, to say that they're aware of this. And yeah. you know, What does it mean? What is the Ark? They've intercepted uh, a telegram or some sort yeah. of communications. Yeah. City of Tennis found, you know, well That's of right. souls. And they mention Ravenwood, yes. who was Indy's mentor. Yes, yeah. We've skipped ahead. We've missed the beginning of this yeah. film. We talk about that. Um, One of the best things about the film is that it starts midway through a previous adventure. Sort yes, of. yeah. Which again, I think, was something that set the yeah. tone for a lot of other films afterwards. But it's a brilliant uh, introduction to the character. I mean, it's it's almost one of the best parts of the film. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. Not the not the rest of the film disappoints at all. But the the whole going off to that golden idol. Yeah. And at first. Uh, Indiana Jones is as just a silhouette. You don't see his face mm. for a while. There's the people round him. They're looking nervous. There's uh, poison darts in trees. They're being yeah. followed. And yeah, he's this mysterious character yeah. in a, a hat and a leather jacket, and he's got a bull whip. Yeah, they they definitely made the effort to turn him into an iconic character. Yeah, I and mean, Steven Spielberg has said that he is, apart from E.T., the only character of his that you'd recognise in silhouette. Oh right, you know, I mean that that's you... a rule that a lot of cartoonists mm. um, live by: that your character should be recognisable in silhouette. That's what you want to aim for. So yeah. obviously Mickey Mouse, all those. I mean the yes. funny animal ones. And I can I I, I was like felt slightly guilty about that with mine because I thought you can't recognise in silhouette; <laughs> they're just people. <laughs> Anyway, um, but one thing I thought, another connection to another film perhaps, is he's quite uh, Toshiro Mifune-like. Mm. I mean, he doesn't have a samurai sword, he has a whip. Yeah. But he's still that kind of, at the beginning, man with no name mm. type, uh, Yojimbo type character, perhaps. Yeah. I mean, that we learn more about him, so he becomes less mysterious later, but... So in the beginning of the film, that's, that's Toshiro Mifune. Yes, you're right, Yeah. <laughs> 
And then, of course, he's going through the the old... I don't know if it's Aztec or Olmec or Mayan or whatever, but through the, the old tomb. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Tomb Raider. It suddenly yes. makes me think of... Which I, I'm sure wouldn't have existed without... No, I mean, the whole idea of Tomb Raider was a, a female version of... Indian Jones, Indian Jones, right. Jones yeah. Um, and so there's all these traps. I mean, that's just fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> the, the only thing that slightly worries me is the technology. Like, yeah. the light shaft. How do they get a light-sensitive... Yeah. Um, thing to then bring out these spears or whatever it is. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dr. Jones, now you, you must understand that this is all strictly confidential. Eh? I understand. Uh, <clears throat> yesterday afternoon, our European sections intercepted a, a German communique that was sent from Cairo to Berlin. Now, you see, over the last two now, years, the Nazis have had teams of archaeologists running around the world looking for all kinds of religious artifacts. Hitler's a nut on the subject. He's crazy. He's obsessed with the occult. And right now, apparently, there's some kind of German archaeological dig going on in the desert outside of Cairo. Now, we've got some information here, but we can't make anything out of it, and maybe you can. Tannis development proceeding. Acquire headpiece staff of Ra, Abner Ravenwood, U.S. Nazis have discovered tennis. So that's the introduction to the character. I mean, yeah. Great. A really exciting beginning. And of um, course you meet his arch enemy right at the end, which yeah. sets up for all the other times in this film anyway, when mm. he meets Belloc and Belloc takes from him what Indiana Jones has put in the effort. Belloc walks in at the end and just takes it. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. I mean, the iconic thing is the boulder. Yes. <laughs> Which is this enormous boulder that chases him out of the tomb, and yeah. he's gone so carefully through all the traps, and then he just <laughs> he just has to run back through them, dodging the spears. And actually, the essence of the the B movie serials, and you you see it when the door's closing, and the other guy who has betrayed him has gone on, yeah, and left Indy hanging over this pit, yeah, with his whip. <laughs> uh, well, no, without his whip, but he he gets out, and the stone door's closing, yeah. And the cutting between Indy and the stone door. And each time you see the stone door, it's really quite close. You think he's not going to make it. Yeah. And then it's still Indy. And then back. And it's actually, actually the stone door's gone up a little bit. <laughs> because, I mean, that, or, or, or it's the same. It hasn't yeah. moved on. Of course, yeah. in your mind, it's moving on. And that creates such tension. Mm. But that was the B-movie serial thing. You'd have a cliffhanger where, you know, you see your characters would fall off a so be in, a, would in a car and it would go over the end of the uh, and then uh, yeah and then then the next one you they show you the detail actually you see them jumping out yes. or whatever yeah but but the cliffhanger bit you wouldn't see that detail yeah yeah um, a little bit they did occasionally cheat yeah <laughs> oh definitely and in fact that's that's again connecting to hidden fortress is i think yeah the writing team behind this lucas spielberg and kazdan wanted a certain number of cliffhangers and each one had to mm. get more and more cliffhangery <laughs> right. um, and going back to Hidden Fortress where uh, Kurosawa would come up with a, a problem and, and the other three writers would have to write them out of it and then mm. Kurosawa would come up with another impossible problem and yes, you know, yes, yeah. so it's that it's that bettering yourself each time upping the stakes yeah, yeah it's like little yeah. gates in the film which I think is a really good way of yes. writing and then each one has to be a bigger obstacle yeah, but the, the whole beginning of the film is is that raising of tension, mm. and he gets chased by the um, South American Indians and yeah. onto the plane. <laughs> anyway, it's a and of course the the, the the sort of punchline to whole thing is he's been fearless through all of that. You know, the spiders, oh, the, the traps, spiders, <laughs> the the in- Indians. Yeah. You know. And then there's a snake in the plane. Yes. <laughs> and that's the one thing that makes him scream like a girl. Quite, quite a big one. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out to be a pet. <laughs> well, yes. Um, but what's interesting, again, about Indiana Jones is we see this tough side to him. Mm. And I think, this is, I think this is possibly unique. I don't know if there's other characters like this. Maybe there are. But then he's an academic. Mm. We see him at the university teaching. Mm. A bit of a heartthrob to the, yeah. to the girls. But... But even then, he seems to be a little bit, you know, when he's, the girl closes her eyes and it says "love you" or whatever. Yeah, he he is a bit. He's a bit sort of uh, doesn't know what to do. Yes, yeah, yeah he's awkward. not. That's not his world. Yeah. His world is the um, the the ruined tombs and stuff. But it's almost like Clark Kent and Superman, isn't it? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. Clark Kent is slightly awkward and he can't chat up Lois Lane. But, but once he puts on that hat and yeah. the whip, not yeah. Superman. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but. It's not what you'd expect scientists in 
in a stereotypical world yeah. are nerdy. Yeah, yes. yeah, they're brainy yeah. and not physical. Yeah, um, and here we've got a fantastic marriage between the two. He's he's brainy. Yeah, he knows his stuff, but also he's a doer. Yeah, he goes out there and actually does the stuff. So he really he knows his subject not just from books, but from yeah, first hand experience. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of the things I love about th- this film is. The, I love just as much their searching in for the knowledge and going through old books mm, yeah. as the you know going through tombs. Yes, it's something yeah. I sort of missed in the very latest one. You know, the Crystal Skull. Yeah, they did do that a bit, but it was so much more breathless adventure that I, yeah. you know I like the quiet moments where they're working out the clues. You know, they're just as important. Mm. Uh, or maybe almost as a balancing. Yeah thing you know having those moments makes the action seem a little more vivid mm. whereas if something's just action all the way through you become a bit immune to it yeah it doesn't you, yeah. you need to try harder and harder quite often perhaps with special effects yeah and spectacle <laughs> rather than plot yeah which yeah. is spectacle's great for those few moments it's up on the screen but it doesn't stay with you yes so well we're off on the adventure really aren't we yeah <laughs> we've talked about the characters and we well Let's talk about Marion Ravenwood. Yes. Because the first thing he does is he has to... Um, um, his link to Ravenwood, who he fell out with, we learn, is his yeah. daughter, yeah. Marion, who we also learn he's... They had an acrimonious split. Yeah. I don't think we learn that until he gets there. No. But she's in Nepal, rather mm. strangely. But she's a great character. Yes. Um, an actual... I mean, for this kind of B-movie thing where you might yeah. expect cliches, she is actually a very well-rounded yeah. female... She's not just the screaming victim. No. She's very strong-willed and a survivor. And you know. I mean, if, if you look at um, Temple of Doom, is it Willie, the girl in that? Mm. She's annoying throughout yes. the whole film. <laughs> yes. uh, she just screams at everything, runs, and I don't know if she does anything good in it. I can't remember <laughs> if she just gets in the way. Um, that seems like a backward step, although at yeah. least it's different from Raiders. But yeah. Marion in this film is fantastic. Yes, yeah. And also, she's not just. Uh, I I quite often think people think, well, I need to write a strong woman, and it's basically just ends up being a man. Yes. In female clothing, yeah. so <laughs> I'll have my woman punch someone. Yeah. Um, she'll be able to punch or or swear or, and yes. that's not that's not it. Women and men are are different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're the same and we're different, <laughs> but. But it's not just a case of sticking trousers on them yes. and giving them a, a mean left hook. It's not writing <laughs> strong female characters. Yeah. Um, now, she is a bit like that, but she's much more rounded. I'm surprised. Yeah. I, I think that's the main thing that I didn't get when I first saw the film, when I was 12, of course. Yeah. But on re-watching it, I'm always impressed mm. at her character. Yeah. I'm glad she came back because she's in the yes, Crystal yeah. Skull as well. Yeah. Although I've only seen that twice, so I, I can't remember a lot of detail. Mm. I did enjoy that. I know a lot of people hate it and, yeah. and you know, think that, like <laughs> The Phantom Menace, it's a complete traitorous act. But um, <laughs> I, I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. It doesn't have the innocence of Raiders. It's no. it's a lot more knowing. It's a lot more slick and and sort of maybe put onto the, a template. I don't know. Yeah, term. I mean, I, I can't remember the story so well on that. And I think that that's because it was... It felt to me like... When it started, it was just non-stop all the way through. I didn't didn't hate it at all, but no, I did feel. I as wonder if is this, this Spielberg? Spielberg, yes. yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I wonder if he had Tintin on his mind because it, it's got elements of Flight Seven One Four. I think is the Tintin book with the oh. aliens at the end. I mean, Flight Seven One Four. They're on their way to Australia, but they end up on this island, and it turns out there's this kind of. Eric von Daniken book Ch- Chariots of the Gods Chariots of the Gods it's that it's a bit of that oh, unfortunately right, yeah. but um, and a lot of people don't like Flight 714 for, for, for the sort of flying saucer at the end oh, right. but there's this ancient thing with aliens yeah. I just wondered if Spielberg had Tintin I felt as though it was a it was it felt like a different thing Indiana Jones was a cult yeah and they, they brought in the aliens it felt like a different different sort of fantasy you yeah know? well it's more really science fit. fiction of course yeah. Um, and one thing they didn't want Raiders to be science fiction and um, Tot the Gestapo man yeah. was going to have a robotic arm at one point yes <laughs> and uh, they decided to get rid of that because it would make it too science fiction yeah. they wanted it really based in reality yes. and I think that's a good point that that does that is one thing that kind of makes it you can still believe it even mm. though it's got the arc yeah. which does have genuine occult powers we see at the end yeah it's still believable. 
Mm. And I think that's probably the, the problem with Crystal Skull is it's just a step too far. I mean, yeah. I, we won't analyse that because I, yeah. I, I need to see it again and sort of understand why. But anyway, we were talking about Ravenwood. So he goes to Nepal. Yes. That's another great scene. The fight in the bar. She runs a bar. Um, looks like she's sort of stuck there. Yeah. Perhaps, but she needs the money, obviously, because she's... Well, the bar gets burnt down in a fight. And, yeah. and that's a great natural way for them to become... Yes. partners actually you're right they're yeah. stuck together I yeah. mean he can't say no to her yeah he's responsible in a way for her bar burning to the ground and he wants the head the staff of Ra yeah. yeah and the whole thing with Tot picking it up I think this is such a, a brilliant thing where yeah. he picks up the headpiece to the he staff sees of it Ra, in the flames yeah. isn't he and it because it's hot it, it burns his hand scars his hand he runs outside and puts it in the snow that's uh, really I think his hand's wet as well uh, and when he touches it and it steams yeah you can really if his hand was dry it just wouldn't be the same <laughs> but you get that oh it's really yeah. in there. and so they only get the front face of the stuff right i always think that's so, so brilliant you know? it is very good and we don't know how they got the information until yes. we just know somehow they've got the information they can't work out why mm. and then we see him give the little hitler salute and yes. there's there's heart, <laughs> there's the um imprint on his hand yeah, <laughs> yeah brilliant God. Yes, that's just what the Hebrews thought. Uh, now what's that supposed to be coming out of there? Lightning. Fire. Power of God or something. I'm beginning to understand Hitler's interest in this. Thing. Oh, yes. The Bible speaks of the Ark leveling mountains and laying waste to entire regions. An army which carries the Ark before it is invincible. So then they fly off to Cairo. Yes. Which is where the Nazi dig is yeah. taking place for the, well, Tanis, mm. the lost city of Tanis. And they're looking for the Well of Souls. No, no, they're looking for, well, they, the, there's the map room. Yes. That's right. There's the map room, which is why you need the head of the <laughs> um, Staff of Ra. Yeah. Uh, and the staff has to be the right height. Yeah. And then it shines a beam down into the map room, and that's the point where the Well of Souls is, and in the Well of Souls is the <laughs> Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> why do the ancients do this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a good job they do. Yeah. A little trail of clues. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe it's only the worthy can have this. You yeah. Know, but, uh, or maybe if they forget, it's like it's like a little trail of breadcrumbs. So if <laughs> if you know it stays within the Tanis elite or whatever, yeah, that they, they know how to find it, but not any pleb can find it. <laughs> but there's there's a, some great scenes in Cairo as well with the um, chase. Yeah, uh, where they're trying to no, I don't know what they're trying to do, but they kidnap Marion. Yeah, and there's the fights. Yeah, and there's that iconic <laughs> sword, the, the Arab with the sword. Yeah, he does all the twirling, and Indiana Jones just shoots him. Yes, <laughs> which of course, supposedly they did have a, a whole fight choreographed, yeah. but uh, Harrison Ford wasn't feeling too well <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> on the day, and so I don't know if you actually, did, yeah, you must have discussed it with the director. And they yeah, like, I just shoot him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone laughed and they thought, yeah, yeah. brilliant. Brilliant. In fact, that's one thing about Raiders. It's funny enough, I didn't notice it until watching it this time, just how much comedy there is in it. Yeah. And it just makes the whole thing, you know, it oils the wheels so well. And it's, good, it's quite yeah. good comedy, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, one bit that really made me laugh out loud was where they're on the ship and Indiana Jones is covering bruises and cuts yeah. and uh, Marion goes to check herself out in the mirror but it's steamed up or a bit dirty so she turns the mirror it's one of those yeah. revolving mirror things swings it over and bashes him on the chin yes. and the scream coincides with the boat's um, uh, foghorn yeah. Uh, yeah horn going off <laughs> But the other, as well as the comedy, the other thing that really shocked me was yeah. the violence. I mean, obviously, the guy at the beginning gets skewered by a spear, and you yeah. see um, yeah. they don't sh hide from showing his, you know, the yeah. horror on his face and the blood and everything. But then the one that really got me was just the stark. I mean, that's something that happened to him in the temple. Yeah. But Indiana Jones in Nepal shoots a man in the head. Yeah, and that shocked me. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. You, when you're 12, you, you just take yeah. it in your stride. 
now I'm older, I imagine if it's because kind of death means a bit more, you yeah. sort of experienced it and you know more about it, but yeah. that really shocked me when he just shot him in the head and you see it. The camera doesn't move away. Yeah. And of course the whole film culminates in someone's head exploding. Yeah. But you also see his head just explodes. And I that kind of shocked me. The one that always gets me is the bloke who gets chopped <clears throat> up in the propeller. Yeah, but at least you don't see that. No, but that is violent. But you do see Indiana Jones sees it's gonna happen. Yeah. And he doesn't say get out of the way and obviously the opponents no well he's already shot someone in the head so yeah. <laughs> he whatever gets I mean he's a Nazi of course yeah. by the way the, the guy who plays the bloke who has the fight around the Nazi oh, yeah, plane, yeah. Yeah. the mechanic he's in two roles in the film he plays the giant Nepalese oh, guy in the right. bar as well Yeah, the one who holds him down on the bar mate. I think so yeah he may be even one that gets shot in the head I can't remember yeah. or was that the other Nepalese and there's another bloke with two roles so I I didn't know this until I read this today. It was um, the guy with the monkey in the eye patch? Oh yeah, <laughs> um, the monkey does the Hitler scene, which is really <laughs> funny. But the guy with the eye patch, he plays the guy at the beginning who runs off, and then when Belloc appears, his body falls to the ground uh, with all the yeah the darts, darts in his back. Right. That's the same guy as the bloke <laughs> with the eye patch. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, save money. Don't yes, yes. <laughs> he actually looks the same. Whereas yeah. I wouldn't, I would never. I mean, I'd never have got the German mechanic yeah. chap. Who's he's a British actor and quite a few. I think he was in Alfred the same pet. Really? I think so. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, died a few years ago, but um, yeah, very memorable that fight. Yeah. And in in the um, Marion gets kidnapped, mm. and then uh, Indiana Jones thinks she's been killed. Yeah, and it may even be his fault because yeah. the truck crashes and explodes. Yeah. Um, and it wouldn't have crashed if it hadn't been for him. So yeah, yeah, that's quite a moment. And so then he, he goes drinking and then is, uh, you know, to drown his sorrows and meets with Belloc. Yeah. And it's actually interesting, Belloc seems to have quite a lot of... Him and Indiana Jones have quite a lot of discussions, or mostly it's Belloc talking about the nature of archaeology and what yeah. they're doing and yeah. how it's... They, he says they both departed from the pure faith, which mm. is just trying to get information. Right. You know, they're acquisitive. And Belloc actually says to Indiana Jones, you know, I, I am your shadow. Yes. Because he is the one... Who, there's a lot that's similar between them. He, Belloc says him and Indiana Jones are the same. Yeah. And, you know, because they're both after the artefacts, you know. They're not... They are plundering a bit. Indiana Jones is sort of plundering. He's doing it for his museum, mm. but it's not... It's still slightly imperialistic, you know. Yes, yes. It wouldn't be done these like that nowadays, no, would it? Taking no. things back to America yeah. or Britain, as yeah. we do. Yeah, yeah. In fact, quite, it's only towards the end that they really start to differentiate. I mean, the main difference, of course, is Belloc is serving the Nazis. <laughs> yeah, I mean, another important difference is that Indiana Jones, and this is the heroic aspect, will go and do these things himself. Yeah. Whereas Belloc will be will hire people, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't know. Maybe he does, or maybe he did yeah. uh, have his adventuring days. And he's obviously not averse to going into south, the jungles of South America. Yeah. But he'll infiltrate Indiana Jones's party with spies and yeah. hire the Indians rather than going yeah. to get it himself. So that's a bit where we can look up to Indiana Jones as the doer. Yes. And Belloc is, you know, he thinks he's the same. Yeah. But actually... He's sort of removed. Yeah. In fact, actually, this is something that um, reminded me of Jurassic Park. Because in there, it's all about... They've taken knowledge which other scientists have found... Standing on the shoulders of giants. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and used it for sort of commercial gain. Yeah. And that's the point of that film. Here, yeah. it's... Belloc is basically gaining treasure from getting other people to do the work and yes. getting other people to find the stuff, and so he just takes it at the end. Exactly, so it's yeah. Standing yeah. on the shoulder of giants again. Again, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and I are very much alike. Archaeology is our religion. Yet we have both fallen from the pure faith. Our methods have not differed as much as you pretend. I am a shadowy reflection of you. It will take only a nudge to make you like me, to push you out of the light. Now you're getting nasty. You know it's true. How nice. Look at this. It's worthless. Ten dollars from a vendor in the street. But I take it, I bury it in the sand for a thousand years, it becomes priceless. Like the ark. Men will kill for it. Men like you and me. What about your boss, Der Fuhrer? I thought he was waiting to take possession. All in good time. When I'm finished with it. 
Well, the next thing is um, Indiana Jones and Belloc are sitting down to this discussion, oh, yeah. and um, they're going to. Indiana Jones goes to shoot Belloc and then they've handed guns around to everyone else in the in the cafe. The kids come. I, I yeah. think that's one one good thing about another another good thing about Rise of Lost Ark. There's there's nothing in it. I hate a film where you see something you think, oh god, that wouldn't happen. That they've obviously got a problem and not really been able to think of a good solution out of it. Mm. Everything in Raiders, or I think almost everything, uh, seems logical. Like how do they get him out of this? Mm. Oh, the kids come and. Uh, you know, I don't know if they call him Uncle Indy or whatever yeah. and they get him out there and all, everyone's laughing and it's it works Yeah. of course that's probably the whole reason we saw Salah and his wife and his the children yes. earlier yeah. was purely for that scene how yeah. can they get him out how about have a load of kids okay we better give Salah all these kids so yes. they they're, he's, he's like Uncle Indy mm. and so it sets that up I mean, when you see the film, it happens the other way. Yes, yeah. Probably in in when they're coming up with the problems, they think right. They think back right. Let's give him loads of kids so that that can happen. Yeah. But that's the point. It's well thought out, and yeah, there's a logical progression between each scene, and that's hard to do. <laughs> so many stories, even really good ones, you can't help but have a little bit. I mean, I do this in Rainbow Orchid. I very much want things to work. Yeah. And quite often, I'll end up having a little bit of a convoluted thing but at least it's logical yeah. and there's a couple of bits where I know I haven't quite risen to the mark and I thought oh, I just you know it would take I mean because it's a comic I think oh, I'll take another five pages <laughs> so I've been a little bit weak yeah. and thought right I'm going to ha- the reader's going to have to assume this or I'm going to have to assume the reader yeah. um, assume and if you know, if I'm asked I'll say this but that's not good enough yeah. you, sh- you should well it's not that you should read a story and not have any questions but you shouldn't have to ask the author how something happened yeah, and I think yes. you know, even really good stuff that mm. and I'm sure in Raiders it's true too somewhere but mm. but mostly they've done a really watertight mm. job yes and that's the sign of a good story I think yeah. where you've really tied up the whole thing's nice and tight and the hole's all plugged really yeah. <laughs> and also a lot they do allow some of the parts of the story to be quite subtle they don't just mm. ram them all down your throat no some things that I didn't notice on the first few watchings <laughs> yeah <laughs> viewings yeah but you sort of it is definitely re-watchable and you notice things lapping in the background little details things like yeah, that yeah yeah very much so and i think today people uh, in general mm. uh films aren't brave enough to do that they yeah things have got to be explained too yeah. much and yeah. it's got oh, people won't get that you know and the audience is treated as a bit stupid yes uh, in blockbusters generally yeah and that's a shame because the audience mm. is a lot more intelligent than it's usually the studios rather than the creators yes. are given credit for. In fact, a good example is the next section where, where they've got they take the staff of Ra to the old man to get it translated. Yeah. And there's poisoned dates, and the mm. monkey eats a date. I don't think I, I realised that on the first couple of watches. You right. Know? Even though I guess it's sort of obvious, but uh, yeah, I know, can't remember the whole setup where because Salah yeah. sees the monkey is dead after eating a date mm. uh, he saves Indiana Jones just in time <laughs> but there's the tension because Indy picks up a date quite early on he's playing with it throughout yeah. the whole scene and when they realise that the Germans are digging in the wrong place because they've only got half the yeah. head to celebrate he sort of throws <laughs> it up in the air to catch it in his mouth and Salah catches it yeah you know, it's not just explaining things it's conveying them in an entertaining yes, yes. and suspenseful way yeah and uh, yeah, something to be proud of in that film, I think, is their storytelling. Of course, another thing I like about that scene is when they sit down to have explained to them what's on the staff of Ra, you get a wind coming through mm. and it rattles. And that appears whenever they start getting closer to the, the arc. Right, sort of There's mystical. This, yeah, because <laughs> right at the beginning, this is something I only realised on this watch. They say that the city of Tennis was buried after it was a year of winds blew on it. Right. So obviously this is the winds of God covering it and all the way through the film wind you know this sort of divine not yeah. divine wind <laughs> <laughs> kamikazes uh, you know this mysterious wind is sort of associated with the ark that sort of gives you a, a creepy yeah um, feeling that uh, you know there are powers There's something stirring yeah, you know. yeah 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 that's true Indy why does the floor move give me your torch Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Asps. 
Very dangerous. You go first. Um, so they get into the map room. Mm -hmm. They go out to Tannis. The Tannis dig and disguised as local diggers. And he goes down to the map room. He's able to find the spot. They find the Well of Souls. Start digging. Yeah. Well, they find the location. And this is a great scene with Marion and Belloc. Um, we've already seen she can hold her drink. <laughs> yeah. So she uses that to get Belloc drunk so she can escape. Yeah. And um, the great scene with the coat hanger. <laughs> Yes, it's, that was brilliant. It's fantastic. So Tot, the Gestapo SS guy, whatever yeah. he is, comes in. It looks like he's taking out this horrible torture contraption <laughs> and they're, they're cowering in his shadow and then it turns out to be a coat hanger for his yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, good. before that, Indiana Jones has happened into that tent, mm. seen that she's alive, starts mm. to free her mm. and then realises that if, she, if it's noticed that she's gone, people will realise that uh, Indiana Jones has gone in the, the camp and yeah, they'll, they'll start looking. Him. And he needs everything to be normal. Yes. So he uh, leaves her there, much to her, her protests. And they basically start their own <laughs> dig right under the noses of the Nazis, yeah. which is, this is brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's digging going on everywhere anyway, yeah. until Belloc sees them mm. at sun, you know, early morning. And, you know, who authorised them to dig there or whatever? What's going yeah. on over there? So they find them. But the the Well of Souls is a, a memorable scene for, I guess, all the snakes. <laughs> yeah. And they do find the Ark down there. Yeah. And Indiana Jones is trapped down there, and Marion's thrown down there, and so they're stuck in this yeah. place with all the snakes. Well, of course, I thought, what do these snakes feed on? <laughs> <laughs> Probably <the> snakes. <laughs> yeah, they eat each other. The, the, yeah. the bit that gets me about that is he sees all the snakes are coming out this wall. Yeah. They're just coming out these eyes, one after the other. So he, decides, he hates snakes, but he decides that's the way out yeah. to break through. Through. And that's fine. Then he breaks through. Where all where all the snakes disappear <laughs> once he's through the wall? But that's where they're coming yeah, from. Yeah, so I didn't quite get that. Yeah. But of course, behind there are a load of mummies. Yeah, yeah. dead, dead. Which is another mummies. horrifying scene. Where it Car is. Uh, Karen Allen. Is that her name? Yeah, Karen. Yeah. Allen, the uh, Marion goes through, and. I think she grabs someone because she thinks it's Indiana Jones and then yeah. suddenly she's surrounded by these dead, oh, it's horrible. gaping dead and there's, bodies. And there's a crowd of them. Yeah. And then Indiana Jones calmly says, come on, let's yeah. find a way out. <laughs> there's a bit where they come out. I, I remember seeing this from certainly, a, if not the first viewing, an early viewing. Hmm. Um, I've long thought, who's that bloke? Do you notice when they, when they come out... Yeah, the block. And they push a block. They push a block, and they're coming down the hill. And you look out, and there's a bloke leaning against the the little um, building that they've just come out. Mm. The heap of stones. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, I always assumed he was knocked out by the fallen well, block. I assume that he just looks asleep. Some there's no explanation. <laughs> um, but I, I can't remember the details. But I read a few days ago that that was a cut scene. There was supposed to be some other professor oh. or something, and it was cut. But they, of course he remains in that long shot yeah. of him coming down the hill <laughs> um, I can't remember the details of it but I always wondered it's just some bloke there yeah this is supposed to be some secret yeah. exit actually one thing to say uh, in association with the other films we've been watching is of course the Ark is made of gold oh yes which is another the, you know they're always what are they looking for I mean they're not looking for it in this case because it's made of gold but yeah. it is made of gold <laughs> yeah I think um, the biblical Ark was Struck of a wood and then covered in gold. Ah. But yeah, you're right. Although that isn't the treasure. No. It just happens to be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny that no one's. I mean, yeah, no one's really interested in, in that. <laughs> thinking, well, this must be worth a packet. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've talked about the, the fight with the airplane yeah. and that. That's a great scene. As well. I mean, this is one great scene after the other, this film. <laughs> but then there's the chase. Yeah. Because um, the ark goes off in a, a crate and is, is being driven to, I don't know, the port at Alexandria yeah. or something. And. But Indy goes off on a horse, actually, yeah. doesn't he, at first, yeah. to chase them. And that's a, another great scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the whole fight around the truck, where yeah. he's trying to take over the truck. Well, it's one of those things that you've seen before, or probably I hadn't at the time, but you see in other mm. films. But in this mm. case, it's done so much more brilliantly. You know, yeah. every well, even, trick even is... It's probably done, been done so many times since then, yeah. influenced by that, but that's still one yeah. of the best. The whole, all the fight scenes in this are very good. Yeah. Quite often fight scenes look so choreographed like it's your turn to punch my turn to punch yeah. and one to, and there's a kind of a heavy rhythm to it yeah I mean, you don't get that in Hong Kong Kung Fu films for instance no. they're brilliantly fast and although they're very choreographed of course but you do tend to get in the slug fests in American films like <laughs> one 
two, one. <coughs> but this is really quite realistic. You, it's done with uh, Harrison Ford is a very good fight. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm. I presume he's doing most of it. I think he did he apparently do a lot of stunts himself. Yeah, yeah. he was a young man then, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and he does. He gets he gets the arc back. Yeah. Which you think, God, he's not going to do that, but because <laughs> there's a whole convoy of Germans yeah. but he manages and it works it, you don't think that would never happen no he does it quite uh, you know, naturally within the confines of the story uh, and it goes on a ship bound for England yeah for some reason whenever I watch this film I always forget about Mr Katanga oh yes and I think and uh, you know I always forget about that whole <laughs> bit with them on the ship and on the submarine I can I sort of think of it as being in the desert and then them going to the island yeah and every time I see it I think oh yeah of course that bit <laughs> I don't know why is that, what is that island why do they go there um, I mean okay so the, the U-boat has stopped yeah. the ship yeah and now the, the, the captain tells the Nazis that Jones is dead yes did he say he killed him yeah, he said he killed him. He's not worth anything, but Marion yeah, is, yeah. You know, implying that yeah. she could be a, a slave. But Indian Jones he dives into the water and gets yeah. onto the U boat. Yeah. We presume he gets into it. Well, <laughs> you don't see it. They, yeah, I think. Do they stay um, on the surface all the yeah. way to the island? Yeah. yeah, I think you've got to presume he gets in yeah. there. I guess it's just a submarine base, perhaps a refueling station. Plus. Um, that was apparently a real, a, a genuine World War II U boat dock. Uh, I think it's in France yeah. that they filmed at, so yeah. it was you know it was still in existence. And the submarine, well, they got that because it was being oh, used yeah. for Das Boot. Das Boot, yes, yeah. <laughs> which is an excellent film, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but the island. I mean, is it just a place to go to? Is it en route? That yes. you know, let's stop there and try it out. Or? I mean, presumably their initial. It's plan. not a significant place, is what I'm saying. Is, oh no, no, get that? it's not. It's no. not like they have to do it. No. At this historically significant place, it's just somewhere, yeah. the ne- perhaps the nearest stop or something that they've got a U boat. Because the Germans' initial plan was to put it on the plane, wasn't it? Yeah. So the submarine is a sort of change of plan. And I guess it's just the first opportunity they've got. Well, the submarine's the second... I mean, because they intercept the ship, of course. Yes. They've lost it. Yeah, mm. yeah. So it probably is just where they can get to. And there's a good scene, actually, before that, when the crate is on the ship. Oh, yeah. And you see it in the hold, and it burn. You know, there's this burning off of the Nazi symbol on the yeah, side of the crate. Yeah, it's centre of the swastika that goes yeah. first and spreads out over the eagle. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that doesn't look good for the Germans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Why, Dr. Jones, whatever are you doing in such a nasty place? Why don't you come on down here? I'll show you. Thank you, my friend, but I think we are all very comfortable up here. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> yes, we are very comfortable up here. So once again, Jones, what was briefly yours is now mine. A lot of fitting into your life's pursuits. You're about to become a permanent addition to this archaeological find. Who knows? In a thousand years, even you may be worth something. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So they're on this island, and they and this is towards the end of the film. There's a scene, quite an interesting scene actually, where Indy has a bazooka trained on <laughs> the ark and threatens to blow it up yeah. if they don't release. Marion. Marion, yeah, he only wants her at this point, which is. Yeah. But of course, Belloc calls his bluff and says, "Go on then." Yeah. And realize that we learn that Indy he can't. Yeah. This is a historical thing, which says a lot about his character. Yeah. Actually, I guess you can't help but admire him a bit for that, even though he's risking yeah. his and Marion's death. And on they go to the end, and they do the ceremony. Yeah. The Nazi general, or well, he's probably not a general, whatever he is, says, "I'm uncomfortable about this Jewish ritual." Yeah. <laughs> I was thought it was a really good touch that the Germans are setting up cameras and lighting. Yeah. I mean, obviously that that is something they did. Yes. And yeah. it, is, it just feels, you know, like yeah, they would do that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know? And he's got belloc has got all the robes and everything, yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> so he knows what he's doing. He believes doesn't he? Belloc mm. actually believes this is going to work. Whereas at yeah. the beginning, when Denham Elliott, um, Brody, and Indiana Jones is packing to go, yeah. and he actually says, oh, I don't believe in all this mumbo-jumbo. Yes, yeah. Um, for him, it's just the artefact. Yes. Yet he knows enough, well, I guess when this, when the ark is opened and the, the seraphim start coming out, he yeah. does say to Marion, close your eyes, as yes. if he knows that you mustn't look at them. So he's he's got the knowledge of the occult. Yeah. And that's another of his areas an archaeologist but he also knows his stuff about the occult mm. but he didn't necessarily believe it 
but now he sees it. Mm. Um, he knows what to do <laughs> or what not to do. It's interesting. They get three. He gets warned three times about the Ark. One is Denim Elliot says, you know, I'm not sure. this is something more than we've ever gone a, right. Right, gone yeah. up against before. Yeah. Uh, Salah says something similar. And the old man who's a translator, you know, he translates the staff of Ra. I'm sure he says something. I noted it down that there's three times people oh, right. say, you know, be careful, this is quite a major thing. It's like nothing yeah. you've been after before. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting... That's a good point, actually. That's a repetition of things yeah. that that may not be strong once. Yeah. But you put in three films, it kind of reinforces the idea in the viewer that, that there's yeah. something here that shouldn't be tampered with. It's also that fairy tale thing. You know, it feels as though if you're warned three times, then you better pay attention. <laughs> right. you know? yeah. And of course he does at the last minute. He, I mean, I suppose this is one of the things that's, that does separate Belloc from Indiana Jones, is that Belloc is definitely after the power of the Ark, whereas Indiana yeah. Jones is really, at the most, he's after the artefact. But when... The historical interest. Yeah, thing. but after that, I mean, he, he does value uh, Marion, human human life more than the artifact whereas mm. Belloc you feel goes the other side he wants power yeah. more than anything yeah. and so yeah. he's the one who gets um, zapped do you think <laughs> it's a bit of a cop out perhaps that they can save themselves just by closing their eyes I mean why uh, maybe I'm, I shouldn't yeah. go into the logic of these things we've said that before but I felt as though no I didn't really feel that I mean I didn't until yeah. now I've just thought of it hang on that's a bit simple. and also if this is the retribution of God I mean, they they might have been allowed to look at it because they were forced to be there. I mean, you think that a, a truly uh, omniscient god would say, <laughs> those are the goodies, let's get the baddies. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. Um, I mean, the whole god biblical thing is full of inconsistencies anyway, so yeah. perhaps not looking at it is the kind of thing that yeah. would save you. Um, you know. And I suppose you could say that the whole point about the film is... There's, um, it's all about uncovering secrets, you know, archaeology getting towards the, the, you know, the thing that's hidden in the middle of the tomb, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the heart of the tomb. And you could say that at the end, Indiana Jones renounces the final looking at the secret, you know, he knows when to stop. And so that's what closing his eyes is, you know. Um, uh, it's, yes, yeah. And that's something that's been in all these films where people well, go the, after... The greed factor. The greed, yeah, the power. He's not greedy. Mm. Um, he's intellectually... Yeah. Interested. Yeah. But he knows the limit, and that's his limit. Mm. He says, right, don't look. Mm. You know, we don't need to know this. And I suppose that's the sort of thing, you know, this is uh, there's a feeling that there are some things man is not meant to know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's, it's sort of like the pure heart type thing. Yeah. Um, this is the test. You know, yeah. Does your greed make you want to hungry for this mm. um, or can you stop yourself yeah. and, and, but, so I mean the last we've already <laughs> talked about exploding head <laughs> which is the culmination of one man's uh, I think it's tot his face melts yes which is I mean I always remember that yeah he's got this scream which is fantastic his fixed scream and then yeah. next time you see him his head is melting yeah and the other guy I think his head collapses or in on itself or something the other German yeah yeah and what happens to Ben um, well his head explodes oh yeah 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 <laughs> he's the one I'm although thinking, before yeah. that fire comes out of his eyes yes and that, uh, from the arc i guess and that he's used as a conduit yeah. for the power and it strikes every other german in the yeah. room who are all looking yeah. but not not marion and indy who aren't looking yeah yeah that, and that's what we see that's similar to the picture we see at the beginning where the arc's got this yes. lightning yeah that's that power it's coming through him yeah and then his head explodes yeah. <laughs> if you think about it scanners which is the famous Head Explodes film, yeah. <laughs> was out at about this time, and that was an 18, definitely. <laughs> yeah, well, af after I saw this, I thought, I, th I saw that when I was 12, I can't yeah. believe it. It's a, the, the DVDs are PG, I don't know yeah. what it was when we saw it. Yeah, um, they didn't have PG. They didn't then. have PG. Did, was it 12? I don't think they had 12s then, did they? Uh, X-A-U. I guess it must be a, yes. a U. Yeah. But I, as I say, I find that quite amazing. Mm. But the, the, um, there's a lot of speeding up in this film some of the, the fight scenes earlier are sped up slightly mm. I think that's how they did the face melting mm. was it was made out of whatever loads uh, of wax I think, yeah, yeah and it, it was put under great heat and then they sort of undercranked a camera yeah so that it when they played back normally yeah. it was um, there's quite a bit of that <laughs> I've noticed in some of the fight scenes they're sped up a bit yeah. which I'm sure was a B movie staple yes. thing yeah. It looks fine, but that's that's one thing that perhaps dates it a bit. Mm. I didn't you... notice that. Actually. Oh, you didn't yeah. notice. I was <laughs> going to say you do notice it. Yeah. Well, okay, I noticed it. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I must say that of these points we're saying are horrific or violent. 
none of them particularly stayed with me as being horrific or violent. No, I mean, I, I said I was I was quite shocked. Like being shot in the head shocked me, and the yeah. head exploding head, and mm. um, just people getting shot so easily. Yeah, and it just being brushed off. I think, as I say, when you're a kid, it's fine. Now I'm quite shocked, by it. but <laughs> but not. It's not a problem for yeah, me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, it's it's fantasy, but it it, it is still. <laughs> You think it does have more meaning, I think, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Um, yes. You think, oh, has he got children? <laughs> this thug. <Yeah. laughs> what about his, his mother? <laughs> okay, Jones. You win. Just blow it up. Blow it back to God. All your life has been spent in pursuit of archaeological relics. Inside the ark are treasures beyond your wildest aspirations. You want to see it open as well as I. Indiana, we are simply passing through history. This, this is history. So, yeah, well, I, I don't know, really. This is such an iconic film. As I said at the beginning, I, f- I found it difficult to analyse this film. Yeah. Um, because it's just so close to mm. me. But I've been able to be more objective about quite a few of the other films. None of them I've seen as, as much as Raiders of the Lost Ark, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but probably by a long shot. And, of course, we're talking about this one. Probably people are listening to this may know it the best. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we're probably not telling them anything new. I'm sure we're not. <laughs> Whereas other films, I'm sure parts of the audience... Will, will not be that yeah. aware. I mean, maybe, yeah, probably most of them are, but but won't be as familiar with, with the films. But is it unfair that this film has <sighs> kind of defined, perhaps defined these ten films as, as my view of cla- what classic adventure is? Yeah. Whereas um, someone who's brought up on science fiction, yeah. perhaps more, more as their central sort of flagpole thing or yeah. <laughs> washing line, whatever... <laughs> Um, I mean, maybe that's the point. Maybe Raiders of the Lost Ark. Maybe, maybe I'm attributing too much importance to it. That's the thing I can't tell anymore. <sighs> but I certainly think it probably is the kind of benchmark for what I'm interested in, and therefore has informed what I mm. like about adventure. What makes an adventure film for me? Yes. I mean, if you were able to look at an unbiased view of all adventure, I mean, Indiana Jones wasn't the first by a long shot. No. I mean, it was heavily influenced. So you've got things like. Ryder Haggard I mean I probably wouldn't have read Ryder Haggard if I hadn't seen Red mm. Lost Star but he's become one of my favourite authors and that's the first thing I think of now I say mm. oh yeah I'm heavily influenced by Ryder Haggard but actually behind Haggard for me is Indiana Jones yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is a bit more mainstream of course um, but, talk, talking I was just going to say on that I saw being a Haggard fan I saw the film I don't know if you've seen them The in the wake of Indiana Jones they they tried to make King Solomon's Minds King Solomon's Minds and they also did um, Alan Quatermain Alan Quatermain yeah with Richard Chamberlain Richard Chamberlain and Sharon Stone oh right I think it was Sharon Stone yeah as his female yes yes oh and I I mean <laughs> terrible I mean it's so I don't know what years they are but mm. certainly they're early 80s I think yeah and um, about Richard Chamberlain being another shogun <laughs> thing yes. um, but but they're obviously trying to cash in on Indiana Jones yeah. and make an, their own Indiana Jones but it's done this is my thing anything done for sort of commercial reasons mm. first is just mostly gun, almost certainly going to be rubbish yes. because you're not it's not coming from the heart it doesn't matter that Indiana Jones isn't original no what matters is its authenticity yeah and the the Ryder Haggard ad- adaptations that came after the chamber were not authentic yeah the authentic bit for them was let's try and make some money on the yeah. back of this and so therefore they didn't care about the story or the product and, and those are great stories mm. but they're terrible films <laughs> <They're> embarrassing <laughs> down your country a great service we thank you and uh, we trust you found the Settlement satisfactory. Well, the money's fine. The situation is totally unacceptable. Well, gentlemen, I guess that just about wraps it up. Where is the Ark? I thought we'd settled that. The Ark is somewhere very safe. From whom? The Ark is a source of unspeakable power, and it has to be researched. And it will be, I assure you, Dr. Brody, Dr. Jones. We have top men working on it right now. Who? Top 
men. And of course, there is the final scene of the film where they're saying, where's the ark gone? Because it's been recovered by the Americans. Yeah. Uh, who's working on it? Top men. <laughs> and he refuses to say anything. And then you see the final scene of it being put into this huge warehouse. Enormous warehouse. I, that was one thing I, I'd forgotten. Mm. You try and look at the back and you can't see it. It's so huge. And I, for some reason, when I first saw that, I assumed it was <laughs> like in heaven. You know, God had taken back the ark. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like some mystical place where every, you know, mystical object was stored. No. <laughs> and it was only later I thought, no, hang on, this is the Americans. Yeah, you know, that's like, you know, the government. Oh, I don't right. know why I assumed that. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> uh, but it did, it reminded me of, of Citizen Kane slightly. With all, oh, yes. Because all his stuff. Yeah. He, he buys those stuff and of course the yeah. rosebud is hidden amongst all yeah. that, those things yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean if I were the government I would not store that many amazing artefacts that close <laughs> to each other I mean surely it would cause some sort of uh, yes. <laughs> disruption <laughs> <This> magical energy <laughs> yeah. vibrating trying to get out <laughs> maybe special crates yeah. I'm sure people believe there really are uh, government warehouses like yeah. that full of you know, dead alien creatures and <laughs> crashed UFOs and ancient biblical <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> powerful items being hidden from us. But yeah, so, you know, that is a very biased um, sort of view of adventure. Yeah. The adventure genre with with possibly Raiders of Lost Ark informing that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a brilliant film. Mm. If, you, if you want to be inspired by a film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you find it difficult to kind of be look at it afresh because you know it so well? Or yeah, I mean, I did to a certain extent. I mean, you know, I sort of on this watch instead of just watching it as a film, I sort of stepped back from it and tried to look at it and thinking, oh, you know, what's going on there? What's going on there? And that's when I realised, for instance, just how much humour there is in it. Yeah, and it's a very different structure to the other adventures we've watched, where you know they're going to one place. Yeah, and it's a journey to that place. This is a lot of episodes, and they're really going mm. on a, a trail rather than a quest, you know. It's interesting you say episodes, of course, because yes. of the influence. I think the other thing is this is a lot more of an action film than yeah. others are. Yeah. So that's more to the forefront. I mean, it does, it is, does have... The plot doesn't suffer. It's mm. not action and no plot. Yeah. It's got a good plot underpinning yeah. it. But that's a lot more... It's, it probably is the most actionful film. I think Golden Voyage of Sinbad would be quite similar. Yeah, that, that may be different. That's another one which goes from place to place, and in each place you have a sort of set scene. Yeah. And, um, and Time Bandits, of course. Actually. <laughs> but it was made as an entertainment, mm. um, whereas something like Lost Horizon is, is very much a sort of philosophical idea, mm. almost. Uh, yeah. Of course, Hidden Fortress was 100% entertainment. He wanted yeah. to just make an entertaining film. Yeah. But it's not. That's Kurosawa. It's not. It's not all action by any means. Um, although by his standards, it's it's more so. Yeah. And what what about the out of all the Indiana Jones films, there's four. Yeah. Uh, which is your favourite? It's probably this one, and it's so difficult to say because this one is so iconic. Yeah. And I said it used to be um, Temple. Temple of Doom, yeah. but after watching them recently, I thought I really didn't like Temple of Doom as much. It just seemed so much following the formula of the first one and also I thought that the relationship between Indiana Jones and the woman in that yeah. <laughs> was I realised it's just lust you know where in this Red of the Lost Ark you feel as though they fall in love with each other again yeah in she's, Temple of she's Doom great. you know and she's it, it's basically Temple. lust <laughs> um quite a few ideas in Temple of Doom were originally for raiders yes. so like the running behind the gong yeah. using it as a shield from a machine gun and in fact the whole Hong Kong or Chinese Shanghai wherever it is yeah. that was they that was going to be in Indy they wanted yeah. a sort of Fu Manchu type character and the gold mine track it's not a gold mine but the mine, yeah, the, the mine, mine car yeah that was going to be Chase. that was a, an idea for Indy that they couldn't fit in yeah and what about the third one is it Last, Last Crusade, Last Crusade? I think that's a, that is a really good sequel to yeah the, the films I, I love the relationship I, each one of these Sean Connery like, yeah. fantastic <laughs> you always do have to add something new Mm. and in this case the relationship between Indiana Jones and his father is just so brilliant it's a brilliant idea and you've got the perfect actors yes. and they just do it so well it's and of course that starts with uh, River Phoenix as a young Indiana yes. Jones did you ever see any of the young Indiana no. Jones have you no I almost bought the box set because mm. I mean it's kind of like I should have that yes. I feel like, <laughs> what am I doing not having it but I I couldn't quite decide whether it would be 
good enough, whether yeah. it be that good, or if it's just... I think I thought, you know, this isn't Spielberg, it's not canon. Yeah. It's I mean, He's behind, I think he's a producer or something, yeah, and of yeah. course he's okayed the plot, but I still felt as though it's other writers. Oh, it's like the mm. books and the comics. Yeah. To me, they're not coming from the original author, and yeah. I can't quite... I feel the same about Take Doctor, them Who, on. Doctor Who spin-offs, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, I really like Last Crusade as well. Yeah. And then, of course, we discussed a new new one yeah. earlier. I, I really need to see that a bit more. Yeah. I quite like it. Yeah. It's it's Indiana Jones, I think, is quite good in that. Uh, it's the 50s, isn't it? Yeah. And he is older. I mean, yes. Harrison Ford, I guess, is 60-something. He does very well in it. Yeah. But, yeah, well, anyway. One thing I, I would like to say about all of the films is I love their use of fantasy, which is so mm. subtle. Mm. And there's the subtle build up until you get it to the end. Normally, in a fantasy film, and you accept it. You'd need the fantasy to be up front. Yeah. You know, if a producer was saying, "You, know, we need to have some flashy look of you know what's going to you know some yeah. fantasy element." Yeah. But in Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, you get the the wind, whenever the arc is mentioned, you know, and then at the end, you finally get to see the you know the supernatural, and it's so effective. But but there's also bits like, for instance, in the Last Crusade, when he's it's at the end isn't it it's yeah. kind of it's kind of a mirror image of the opening of Raiders where he's got to go through all the sort of tasks yes, you know, yeah. and bow down to the yeah the, so, and that, that means the penitent duck. man That's bows right. before uh, God but it all makes sense like where he's got to step onto nothing yes and he does it and then you see it actually it's a, an optical illusion yes. from the rock and you think oh yeah that's mm. so it makes sense although then of course there is the magic where the, the knight has been alive for yeah. you know, a thousand years or whatever um, yes so brilliant film brilliant film <laughs> right that's, that, that's the short version <laughs> so next we've got She yeah we're going back to the 30s a, a year before uh, Raiders Lost Ark is set <laughs> 1935, yes. quite an old version of She, and uh, then we've only got one more, The Golden Voyage of Sinbad, and we're yes, done. Yes. <laughs> we've actually done it. Anyway, we're not there yet. So thank you very much for listening to the 8th Adventure Film Podcast, and um, we shall see you back for She Who Must Not Be Named. <laughs> <laughs>